It's a long journey from the capital Juba to reach remote communities on the west bank of the Nile. First, it's an early morning flight to Malakal with its large United Nations protection site. Then a short hop via helicopter to Kadok. And finally, an hour-long ride with the Bangladeshi Riverine Patrol. This trip is an opportunity for the head of the United Nations mission in South Sudan to assess potential sites for a new peacekeeping base. I mean, first of all, we don't have a presence on the western bank of the Nile and it's very difficult to get here if we don't have a presence here already. Um, secondly, um, it, we could add to the security situation. Ultimately, the security situation is the responsibility of the government. Um, but if we can provide confidence and provide, add to that sense of stability, uh, and that people can come back, I think that would be a positive thing. And I think thirdly, um, humanitarian organisations are looking to establish themselves here and if people were to come back, uh, that might encourage more humanitarian organisations to establish themselves here. Along with a mini-boom in the local wildlife, people are also beginning to return to Gadok in the Upper Nile. There aren't too many products for sale in the market yet, but children are back in school and eager to learn. The community wants the UN to set up a base to provide a protective presence for refugees returning from camps in Sudan and also for internally displaced people. The hope for peace is the wish of everybody and uh, we are still hopeful that uh, the coming round of talks in Addis Ababa uh, next week uh, will bring peace, uh, not the same day, but it is a process that will start from that day as people start uh, negotiating and trying to put away their differences and work for a consolidated peace. So we are hoping that uh, peace is coming. Locals say the UN's help with this process and bringing peace to Kadok is vital. Uh, United Nations, we, we like them to help us. Aye. We like them to help us, to help us in other things, also in food and peace. Down the river, it's not such a welcoming environment. While Shaluk has the appearance of a ghost town, although it's difficult to know what is going on behind the multitude of large corrugated iron type compounds. The UN team's access is limited by local authorities to the main street, in the past few days, 100 people have left Wao Shaluk for the safety of the Malakal protection site, and there appears to be very few women and children left in the town. The governor back in Malakal has one explanation. Why are there only men really in Wao Shaluk, no women and children, just men? Uh, uh, I, I, you know, sometimes lack of, uh, of services lack of services in Washuluk is, is, is a major challenge. And you, and you see when there was uh, a displacement and uh, those days, so the few are returning, returning back, they are in the surrounding village. Malakal was one of the worst hit areas during the height of the civil war. Today the security situation has improved, with people moving freely during the day between the UN protection site and the town. The focus in this region is building trust so that families can safely return to their homes and look forward to a peaceful and prosperous future.